Okay, so this is industrial cybersecurity uh, from the perspective of the power sector today. Quickly, introductions. Uh, I'm Wade Polk. We got Jay Novak here and Paul Muckowitz over there. Uh, we're all control systems engineers. We design the brains of power plants, mining facilities, etc. Um, our company is Worley Parsons. We got 29,000 employees in 40 different countries. Uh, we do everything from infrastructure to environment to power, mining, minerals, hydrocarbons, and even some manufacturing. Okay, so what kind of stuff can you expect today? You learn a little bit about what has happened, uh, what can happen. You learn a little bit about traditional process design as well as malicious process design, something fairly new. You learn the basics of protecting a power plant, and then we'll give a case study of a PLC. Uh, the security flaws and how to mitigate those security flaws. Uh, you'll see examples of worst case scenarios uh, and after the uh, talk we'll give an audience free-for-all where you'll all have the opportunity to attempt to hack our network. In doing all this you'll get an indirect overview of process design and controls. What not to expect? We won't be discussing uh, industrial cybersecurity in depth. We wrote a pretty large 70-page paper on that. Uh, you won't learn how to be an INC engineer. That takes about six years. Uh, we won't talk about network ha hacking in depth either. Okay, so what is an INC engineer? Uh, we design, we specify, and we purchase uh, instrumentation, controls, controllers, and network equipment. Uh, we develop, test, and evaluate control logic and programs, uh, operations, maintenance procedures, and system and network designs. Uh, we also are required to meet various regulatory requirements, such as NERC, NRC, which we'll talk about later. Thank you. <laughs> so, what is a control system? I mean, I think my first introduction to control system was through a cartoon like Homer Simpson, where he's uh, sitting at his control table and uh, twisting uh, uh, levers and pushing buttons and turning on the parts of the city and turning them off. But in reality, control system is uh, quite a bit dri different and complicated. Um, control system is a set of instruments, controls and controllers used to manage and control the behavior of process machinery and thus the process. Um, first thing on the list we have is instruments. These are variable uh, devices that collect and transmit data. Uh, they can be for flow, temperature, pressure, vibration, etc. What they do is usually be a, a either a hardwired IOs or analog IOs or maybe some kind of proprietary communication that transfer data back to uh, the individual controllers. Um, as far as controllers goes, uh, they modify uh, the operation of machinery or the process. Uh, some examples of this are actually buttons and levers and switches. Uh, other ones are more involved like uh, HMIs, human machine interfaces and etc. cetera. Um, now we're gonna move down to controllers. Uh, SCADA, you guys have like six or seven speeches of SCADA this past uh, few days, so we're not going to get far into that. Uh, DCS, Distributed Control System, basically a set of modules and controllers spread out throughout the plant uh, in the different locations that vary the process of the plant. Uh, then you have things called PLCs, Programmer Logic Controllers, and these devices are actually uh, earlier, they kept, they were fairly simple and they were used to present, uh, you know, to work a simple process, but now they're getting more, uh, they're getting more robust, they're getting more developed, they're getting, they're getting bigger. They're trying to catch up to the DCS uh, portion, but they're not there yet. Then we got smaller controllers, such as uh, single loop controllers, SLCs, for small applications. So basically, all this I.O. and all these controllers do one function. They energize, turn on, actuate devices like motors, uh, valves, pumps, and actuators. Um, go ahead, go to one. Well, thank you. Uh, in terms of uh, magnitude, a typical 2 gigawatt uh, power plant uh, has upwards of 150 PCs, uh, around 50 PLCs, uh, 1 to 10 DCS loops, uh, and hundreds of HMIs. Again, the complexity and the, si the size depends on complexity and the size of the plant. The more units, the more uh, environmental controls you have, the more things you have running the plant, the more complex the plant's going to be. So what are some uh, roles and responsibilities? We basically have five groups within a plant. First, we have engineering, and that's, uh, that's us. We design, uh, build, and uh, buy the equipment. Uh, that's what engineers do. Next, we have operations. And operations basically run the plant. Uh, they're maintenance. They're at the plant 24 hours a day. That make sure, they make sure everything works. 
And next we have the IT, and IT is uh, the handle enterprise management, hardening, uh, running of the computers, etc. cetera. Uh, and last group is management. I really don't know what management does. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They, they, give the money, they give the budget and the schedule. We need those guys, we really need those guys. But if, uh, you, can, if you can notice, uh, and one more please. And also we have the auditors, which are people that eventually <laughs> will come in and, uh, well, do very bad things to us. Uh, but if you can look at the network right here, you can notice there's a connect between engineering and operations. Uh, basically, that's a kind of a marriage of convenience. They have to talk to each other. They have to communicate with each other because if they don't, the power's gonna, your power's going to go off. That's as simple as that. IT is a little bit separate on the side. Uh, they don't know much about control systems. Uh, they know a lot about network diagrams, but they don't know what to do at the control. They don't know how to control the process. So if we go into ideal roles and responsibilities, we can see that all the three factions, or actually all the four factions, are kind of merged together. Uh, by this, we mean that engineering will provide the design, the specifications, IT will run the update the patches, and the operations will keep the plan running. But all three factions have to work and have to cooperate with each other in order to have a safe, uh, robust plant. I'm going to let uh, go ahead. And also, I forgot to say, management has to give the money and give us long enough of schedules to do what we need to do. Um, so what's the worst that can happen? I'm going to let Paul talk about that. All right, so what is the worst that can happen? And there have been uh, a lot of talks today. How many people, just out of curiosity, went to James Arlen's talk this afternoon about uh, uh, cyber, cyber douchery, something like that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he talked a lot about this, about uh, what the worst case scenarios are. Essentially, there's two, two different viewpoints on this, and everyone falls within uh, somewhere between these two. Uh, you have the really optimistic viewpoint that says, well, uh, nothing's happened so far, there's nothing broken, so why spend a lot of time and money trying to fix it? Um, the, the industry, for, especially in the power, the power sector, has, is sort of missing a catastrophic event that's happened that you can point to and say, well, if you don't secure your network, uh, this is what's going to happen to you. It's going to cause this much money and this much damage, so this is, that's why it's important to do this stuff. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's like a, uh, you can't see the problem, so there's, there's no problem there. It reminds me of a story, it might be a joke, I, I can't remember when you talk about this stuff, they kind of get blurred together, uh, about a, a I think it was a military installation that they were running a network. Uh, they wanted to install their in, an intrusion detection system. Uh, so they put it into place, they turned it on, and immediately they saw all kinds of unauthorized activity on their network. And so they go to the, the person running the installation, a general or something, and they tell them what happened. And uh, instantly the general gets angry at them and starts yelling at them and says, why would you guys put this thing in? Before we didn't have any problem. There was no one trying to attack our network, and now there's all kinds of people trying to attack our network. So that's the kind of the kind of problem you, we have be, is that uh, you can't see the problem because nothing has really happened uh, serious, so you can't point to that. Uh, one of the other things that that these people will tell you is that these plants are inherently they're intrinsically safe because when you build a power plant, uh, you're putting in all kinds of, of redundant safeties, mechanical interlocks, uh, things that even if someone was able to get complete control of your network and, and start turning things off and turning things on and screwing things up, uh, these safeties are going to going to kick in and prevent pressures from building up and, and, and prevent things from really bad from happening, prevent uh, the, the most catastrophic types of damages. Uh, on the other side of the scale, you have the, the pessimistic view, which is that uh, uh, the IT person who is preaching fire and brimstone uh, up on the stage telling you that uh, if you don't uh, secure your, your control system network, uh, PLC is going to come to life and, and drive to your house and punch your kids and drink all your beer at night, uh, which you also don't want. Um, and there's some truth to that too because power plants are typically, ex they're extremely complex. They've a lot of times just have giant piles of, of explosive materials lying around in the yard specifically at, at coal plants and they're things that need to be protected. Uh, so you've got to realize that these, there's a lot of dangers inherent in running one of these things. Uh, in addition to that, they're, they're often really, really old, uh, especially with power plants. Uh, some of these are, are, have been running for 30, 40, 50 years maybe. Uh, which means that a lot of the original equipment is in there that's 30, 40, 50 years old. A lot of the original uh, control systems in there are, are also that old. Um, and then th as things get upgraded, you get a patchwork of uh, different types of controls from different ages, and that's what causes a lot of the vulnerabilities that you see out there now. Uh, in addition to that, uh, 
because you don't have the original design in there, a lot of the safeties that you've built into the plant, uh, maybe they're not going to function like you expect them to when you need them to. Uh, you know, you, you have a pressure building up in a, a tank somewhere and you expect one of your pressure relief valves to open up and it hasn't been maintained in 20 years or it's been taken out because somebody didn't think you need it and you no longer have that safety. Uh, so I talked just a few minutes ago about uh, what the worst case, what, what, what's happened in the industry so far. And like I said, there, there haven't been a lot of things that you can point to and say, that's, uh, that's a really bad thing that's happened and, and that's why we need to fix our system now. Uh, there have been a few things that have happened. I guess you can call them near misses because nothing terrible has come out of them. But uh, for the most part, um, there's nothing to point to. I'm just going to go over, uh, we picked out a small cross section of things that have happened. Uh, there's things in the news even, even recently uh, uh, that are happening in, with control systems in SCADA, but uh, just a few up here. Uh, one of them in 1999, a petroleum uh, uh, gasoline pipeline up in Washington State uh, was building, there was some pressure building up. The, it was all due to non-control system related things, un, unrelated incidents. The pipeline was damaged and, and so you had uh, some structural weakness there. And uh, as a result, it exploded and spilled a bunch of gas into a nearby river and that lit on fire and, and it killed a few people. Um, like I said, that's not a cyber, there wasn't a cyber attack involved there. There was, there was uh, no control system problem involved there. Unfortunately, what happened at the same time, completely independently, is there was a contractor or someone working on that system as this was happening. Whatever they were doing, for whatever reason, caused the control system to freeze up, become unresponsive. So where there'd normally be procedures, the, the uh, operator of the pipeline would have seen that pressure build. They would have been able to do something, take some type of action to relieve the pressure. They weren't able to do that. Um, so, I mean, that's not a cyber attack, but that's the type of thing that can happen when you don't have, when your, your control system isn't operating the way it needs to be. Uh, in addition to that, uh, just another example of an untargeted attack, something that can happen without uh, someone specifically going after you. In 2003, in a nuclear plant in Ohio, uh, the slammer virus was able to make its way onto a control network through, I think, an unsecured contractor connection. Um, as a result, the network, the plant wasn't operating at the time, which is important. Uh, if it was an operating plant, this would have been much, much worse. It wasn't operating, and as, uh, since there was so much additional network traffic due to that virus, uh, the safety monitoring systems, the, mon the computers that monitor all the safety equipment, weren't able to communicate with the rest of the plant, which is a terrible situation to have in a, a, a new plant especially. Like I said, there's a lot of others, but uh, it's hard to point to one in particular that, that has a devastating effect. Uh, all right, next we want to talk about some, of the, some root causes. Uh, the first thing that I want to say is there's a lot of root causes, all right? There have uh, been five or six talks about SCADA and cybersecurity and all that stuff at uh, industrial plants. And I'm sure every one of them is going to point to a different list of causes and a different list of problems. And they're all right to some extent. The ones we want to talk to you guys about are the ones that are important to us as controls engineers. And that's the design of the plant. So the stuff that happens before the plant is even running. Right now, a lot of the focus on security is on the IT side, the side about, of uh, uh, hardening your, your computers and which software you, you install and where do you put your firewalls and, and that type of stuff, uh, which is all really important stuff and that's where the focus should be, but you miss the boat a little if that's all you focus on. Uh, the thing that's important is that you need to start the process earlier when you're purchasing equipment, when you're specifying equipment. You need to specify stuff that's, that's intrinsically safe on, uh, to put on a network. If you're buying stuff that's not safe and is, is just automatically is dangerous off the bat and has all kinds of flaws, you're creating a whole lot of work for the, the people that need to make that secure and harden later, uh, and you're, you're essentially wasting a lot of time and money. The reason that the, uh, the, the focus is where it is right now on the IT side is because these plants, like I was saying before, are all really, really, really old plants. So you've got all these systems that are on the network that weren't even designed to talk on a network uh, because they were built so long ago, and that's causing all kinds of, of headaches and flaws and vulnerabilities that, that really shouldn't be there. Um, so we just sort of take for granted when we go out and buy new equipment that it's going to be better than the stuff that's out there because how can it be any worse? It can't really. Uh, unfortunately, that's not always the case. What, what we see happening a lot of times is that uh, when you buy this new equipment and put it in, you're, you're replacing an insecure network with a really in, another piece of equipment that's a, a really insecure network but in a user-friendly way, in a way that my grandma could probably exploit. Uh, and the reason this is happening is because uh, manufacturers are putting features into their equipment 
uh, like for example uh, relays or, or MCCs that uh, you can reprogram